clinical examination of the cardiovascular system is uh, very rewarding since symptoms and signs can be explained in terms of anatomy and physiology and allow for accurate diagnosis. Um, as patient walks into the consulting room, you can make certain diagnosis and uh, it helps. For example, this patient is walking to the table and I'm sure you are certain that the child is talking and uh, having difficulty in breathing and has an NG tube institute for oxygen. It is bra, bra. So as patient walks in, you watch the, the gait and the appearance and uh, whether his patient is having difficulty in walking. And you can see this patient was uh, having difficulty in walking. Patient is now lying on the couch and you can see that the breathing difficulty has increased which tells you there is some autopnea uh, in this patient. And uh, you can see that the coughing too has increased because of the autopnea. So that is on inspection. Then you examine the hands and the hands we are examining for edema and clubbing. This patient, you can see that there is clubbing in all the fingers and the, the toes. And then the hands, too, you are watching for color, the cyanosis, which I hope you appreciate that this patient has uh, some cyanosis here. It could be peripheral or central, so if you want to watch the tongue, you take a manager. Uh, you think? Uh, uh, so under the tongue, we will look at the There's some sinusus, so tell you there's central sinusus in this patient. There's no edema as you can see in the hands and the feet. Okay. Then you watch the face. If there's any syndromic features, that is where there are some cardiac conditions come as a syndrome. Down syndrome is there. So you look for features of Down syndrome. Some have malfunction syndrome where you, you have long extremities. Uh, this patient has none of them. So the objective of what examining the face is looking for syndromes. Then you could see that the chest wall, there's a bulge here on the, on the chest wall. You can see that the, um, it's raised. Um, and uh, it tells you that the heart is enlarged. Okay. And usually, if there's a bolt in the chest wall, we are mainly dealing with the right ventricle, which enlarges anteriorly. Because the anatomy said that the right ventricle is anterior, so it will enlarge anteriorly. Left ventricle is mainly a posterior structure, so it enlarges backwards. Then, after that, you want to examine the pulses. So, the radial pulses, you want to you are looking for the rate and trying to synchronize that with the stop. Synchronize the radial pulse with the femoral pulse because in coactation of your tartar synchrony is not there. So the peripheral pulse by the, the radial and the brachial pulses. Okay. The femoral pulse is 
usually felt between the superior elder Fusa and the and the public Tibetan. And it's always better if the patient is relaxed to be able to feel it. It's always better to feel for both right and left. Good. So far, so good. And the other point about the the church wall is the activity in the church wall. You can see that there is increased activity in the church wall. It tells you there is some form of heart failure in this, in this child. The next thing is palpation. You want to palpate for thrills and then look whether you can feel and locate the apex. Now the landmark for palpating in cardiovascular is the mandibulosternal angle, which you feel and at that point below it it's, that angle is at the level of the second costal cartilage, so below it, the second intercostal space. So that, that is your anatomical landmark. So once you are able to feel the apex, which is the atomus, and the multilateral aspect where your hands are lifted, and you can count the space, and that will be your apex. Usually it's in the fifth midclavicular line. If it's outside that, it's uh, a large, a large part. So your, your apex is, the landmarks are the mid-clavicular, the anterior axillary line, and the, the, stop me. So mid-clavicular, anterior axillary line, and the mid, mid-axillary line. Okay, good. And older children like this child, you should also take opportunity to examine the neck for raised jugular venous pressure. The infants, the neck is short, so if you are not able to, to see the increase in the jugular venous pressure, then it's, uh, it's not something that you should worry at all. The, once you feel a trail, it means it's a member grade more than three. So you are think, talking of grade four, five, and six. Once you feel that, and the three is usually first at the site of the pathology. And the cardiac sites when you are listening for heart sound. So after you've palpated for trails and located the apex, now you want to use a stethoscope to listen to the heart sounds. But you have you should listen for the heart sounds at the cardiac areas. And there are cardiac areas where pathology is being looked for. These cardiac areas are the apex. That's where the matcha valve is. The left lower sternal edge, that's where, where your ventricular septum is. So if there is a ventricular septal defect, BSD, that's where you hear the memory, and that's where you will be feeling your clear. Then you have the second or third left intercostal space. In the left, that's where your pulmonary valve is. So if there is a pulmonary stenosis, that's where you are going to hear your memory. Then the right second or third intercostal space, which is here, that's where we are going to hear your aortic valve abnormalities, whatever the aortic valve is. So as you see, your landmark is the manipulosternal angle, which is equivalent to the second costal cartilage. Then your other cardiac site is under the clavicle on the left. This is where the aorta and the pulmonary trunk come out of the, of the pericardium. So if there's a connection between the two, that's where you are going to hear a member of the ten doctors at The other cardiac site is at the back 
See the other child is now sitting up. It's a bit more comfortable compared to when it was lying down. And the cough is, is less. 